In this video, we're going to learn a simple and easy way to keep your player restricted inside the bounds of the screen you, when you're creating a game with GDevelop. So to do this first, we need our player. Let's go over here, right side of objects, add a new sprite. We'll name him Hero. We'll just create a new one, have a simple shape. Give him some color. Let's make him green. And then we just go ahead and give him behavior so you can move around. We'll give him the top down movement. So this is kind of like a, if you're doing a snake game or a space shooter or something. Apply. Let's drag him onto the screen. Preview what we've done so far. You can see we have this nice player. He can move around. But he can also move right off the screen. So, what are we going to do to keep our player from running off the screen? Well, in real life, let's say you had a dog in your yard and you wanted to keep your dog from running outside the yard, you'd build a fence, right? So we're essentially going to do the same thing. We're going to build a fence around the screen to keep our player inside. So we need another object. We'll do another sprite. Let's just call it fence since we're using that analogy. Go ahead and um, create just a plane. We'll just keep it black, simple. Hit save here. Doesn't need any behaviors. Click apply. Let's draw our fence around the screen. So we'll start by drawing it to where there's a little bit showing. So kind of like if you want a border around your game. Do the top. Do the left side. Just do the bottom. And let's do the right side. All right, now let's test that and see that how that border looks. Pretty good, a little thick still on this side. Uh, but we haven't told it to do anything yet, so the player can just run right below it. And it goes behind it because we created the border first and we haven't changed the Z order. Um, but we're not going to worry about that because we don't want the player to be able to move past our fence. So let's close this out real quick. We'll just kind of move this over just a little bit more to make that look better. And then we need to create our first event the event that's going to tell us what to do when the player gets to our fence. So for our condition, we'll use collision. So when the player hits the fence, our hero comes in contact with the fence. And the action, there's a really cool simple one under common actions and then if under position, you'll find separate two objects, right? And we want those two objects to be the, our hero and our fence, because we want them to keep apart. So now, with just that one uh, condition in action, if we go back and preview our game, we have a working fence. Our player cannot go past the border. It's restricted inside the screen. But, let's say just like in our, uh, our yard example, what if your neighborhood association doesn't let you build a fence, right? They don't want big ugly fences. In this case we don't want big ugly border. Well, you could use uh, an invisible fence for your dog, right? Buried underground when the dog gets close to it. They hear the little beeping, and if they've kind of learned not to go past it, because they get a shock, so they stay inside your yard without having to see an ugly fence. We're going to just do the same thing, same kind of thing here. We're going to create an invisible border. So let's go back, and we're going to create, add one more action. Let's move it to the top. And the condition is uh, when it starts, so the start of the scene. So 
the beginning of the scene. And our action will be to hide our fence. Hit OK. Go back to test it. Can no longer see the fence. Our player is still restricted inside. So that's how you keep your player restricted inside the screen. Now, I want to go over one more thing since we're using collisions. Uh, to do this, we're going to go back to our, our character. And we're going to edit our character for just one second. And on behaviors, this rotate object, we're going to turn that off real quick. All right. So you saw how it was kind of the the state was when it would turn. When I would go right, it would turn right. When I went left, it would turn left. Well, now we're we're going to turn that off so it doesn't rotate. It just moves back and forth, kind of like a, a paddle, right? And you'll notice that the distance to the wall on the left side there is bigger than like on the bottom or on the right or on the top. Well, why is that? Well, I kind of did it intentionally to show this. But if you go back to your player, you can see right now, if we go to edit them, and we get edit hit boxes, this is actually what's colliding, this outside part. So you can see there's a bigger space between our actual um, character and the, the collision markers. So we're going to do um, use a create a custom collision mask. And we'll just do a polygon. Our guy's a square. So we'll, we'll just do quadrilateral because that's four points. That's really all we need. And we're just going to drag these to the corners of the actual player. And if you have a more complex shape, you can add extra points to make it a little bit more exact. But that's good enough for this one. So we'll go ahead and close and apply. Now when we test it, when we come over to this side, you see it's the same distance because it's actually the, the new hitbox that's lined up exactly with um, our player as opposed to the um, existing one, which was the kind of full spaces, including the invisible part, the invisible background, transparent background on our player. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe. If you don't like this video, please subscribe. I'll try to do better next time. Hit the little bell so you get notifications when I put out new videos. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.